We are ready. It is gross outside, um, but it is warm in here for the next little bit at least. Uh, my name is Chris Tuttle. I'm one of the pastors. It is our um, privilege on behalf of the whole team to welcome you all to, to a really special evening. We are grateful um, for the ways we can, we can, we can hear the story um, read and proclaimed and put together, maybe in some slightly different ways than we're used to hearing it. A couple of words of gratitude um, to Prue and to Janet and to Marita and Monica and very many other people whose names are on the back of this. This always takes a village to pull this off. It is really wonderful that you are here. Friends, the Lord be with you. Let us together worship God.
please remain standing for the call to worship, which can be found in your bulletin. Sing choirs of angels, sing an exaltation. This night we remember the birth of Mary's child. This night we remember the source of our joy, God among us. This night we recommit ourselves to follow the Christ, who is Emmanuel, God among us, Prince of Peace. A reading from the Old Testament book of Isaiah, chapter 11, verses 1 through 6. Like a branch that sprouts from a stalk, someone from David's family will someday be king. The Spirit of the Lord will be with him to give him understanding, wisdom, and insight. He will be powerful and he will know in honor the Lord. His greatest joy will t- be to obey the Lord. This king won't judge by appearances or listen to rumors. The poor and the needy will be treated with fairness and with justice. His word will be law everywhere in the land, and criminals will be put to death. Honesty and fairness will be his royal robes. Leopards will lie down with young goats, and wolves will rest with lambs. Calves and lions will eat together and be cared for by little children.
about that time, Emperor, uh, Emperor Augustus gave orders for the names of all the people to be listed in record books. These first records were made when Quirinius was governor of Syria. Everyone had to go to the hometown of their family so that they could be listed. Therefore, Joseph had to leave Nazareth and Galilee and travel to Bethlehem in Judea. Long ago, Bethlehem had been King David's hometown, and Joseph went there because he was from King David's family. Mary was engaged to Joseph and traveled with him to Bethlehem. She was soon going to have a baby. What do you want? Do you have any room where we can stay? No. I'm sorry, the inn is full. Don't you have anywhere that we can stay? It's so late in our life's time to deliver is near. Maybe you can stay back here in the stable. Follow me. And while they were there, she gave birth to her firstborn son. She dressed him in baby clothes and laid him in a manger on a bed of hay, because there is no room for them in the inn.
That night in the fields near Bethlehem, some shepherds were guarding their sheep. All at once an angel came down to them from the Lord, and the brightness of the Lord's glory flashed around them. The shepherds were frightened, but the angel said to them, Don't be afraid. I have good news for you, which will make everyone happy. This very day in King David's hometown of Bethlehem, a Savior was born for you. He is Christ the Lord. You will know who he is because you will find him wrapped in a baby blanket and lying in a manger on a bed of hay. Suddenly many angels came down from heaven and joined in praising God. had left and gone back to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, Let's go to Bethlehem. <laughs> oh. Where's the baby? Follow me. The shepherds hurried off and found Mary and Joseph, and they saw the baby lying in the manger. When the shepherds saw Jesus, they told his parents what the angel had said about him. While everyone listened and was surprised, privately Mary thought very deeply about what, about what all this might mean for her child. The shepherds praised God and realized that everything they had seen and heard was just as the angel had said.
When Jesus was born in the town of Bethlehem in the land of Judea, Herod was the king and of Judea, and he lived in Jerusalem. King Herod had been told by his chief priests and scribes about Isaiah's prophecy, and it worried him. The prophecy stated, A child destined to become king of the Jews will be born in the town of Bethlehem in the land of Judea. He will be a leader, and like a shepherd to the people of Israel. King Herod did not like what he had heard, and secretly wanted to find the child. Wise men from the east learned that a special child had been born in the land of Judea. They arrived in Jerusalem to ask King Herod what he knew. Where is the child born to be the king of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. Go to Bethlehem and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, let me know. I want to go and worship him too. Into the sudden night, as we make our weary way, we know not where, but just then when the night becomes its darkest and we cannot see our path. Just then is when the angels rush in, their hands full of stars. The wise ones listened to what the king said and then left. And a star they had seen in the east went on ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When the magi went into the house and saw the child with Mary, his mother, they knelt down and worshipped him. They took out their gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh, and they gave them to the the child. Later, they they were warned by God in a dream that they should not return to Herod. So they went back to their own countries by another route.
don't know we don't know how quickly all these events happen. Some folks say the kings did even make it to Bethlehem for over a year. If it did take over a year, the kings would have not have found Jesus in a manger. We do know that Jesus' birth was special. Mary and Joseph knew that God had blessed them in a most wonderful way. Mary and Joseph were the parents of Jesus, the Son of God. Angels told of his glorious birth. Shepherds and their flocks came to adore the baby. Wise ones brought gifts. Today we celebrate the birth of our Savior, Emmanuel, and God among us. Let us reflect on the lessons of tonight and the greatest gift that we're given to each of us, Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Loving God, whose son was born in Bethlehem those days long ago, lead us to that same holy place where Mary laid her teeny child. And as we look on in wonder and praise, 
Let the gifts of your peace come into our hearts and remain with us. Bless our families and friends. Bless all the people of the world. Give us kindness and patience to support each other and wisdom in all that we do. May we rejoice in your blessings for all our days. Amen. I don't know about you, but I feel full of joy at this moment. So let's, let's show our gratitude for this wonderful <laughs> So if you have been standing a long while, pageant participants, and you feel like you want to sit for a moment, you may do that, all right? Feel free to do that, all right. Because first of all, I want to thank all of you for coming this evening and for making this Starbright pageant such a wonderful thing that it has been. The story of our Lord Jesus Christ coming into this world it invites us to respond, doesn't it? It invites us to respond with lives of gratitude. One way you can do that is by offering your gift this Christmas. Our Christmas offering is for the Emmanuel Food Pantry, and you can read all about it on the back of your bulletin. Please um, give generously. There will be baskets at the back um, on your way out from our ushers, or you can do so online. Our children and our young people here, along with parents and grandparents, have worked so hard and did an outstanding job. I'd like to share a special word of thanks for just a couple folks, first of all. In particular, um, Ms. Janet Whitaker, who is over here. She started our new weekly music program called m ms And you might wonder what that stands for. Music, arts, and missions. And she just started that at the beginning of this year, and they have thrown their all into this, and it, I feel like it's added so much to our worship time and our pageant. So thank you for that. Also, Prue Meyer, thank you. Thank you. Prue Meyer up at the front here has been this year's creative director, and she brought a real artist's flair. And you can just see, by the way, this looks how, how she brought that sense of creativity to this ministry. And I thank both of them for that. And I'm going to invite. And this is Jennifer Filer, and she has another word of gratitude. Monica, can we ask you to come out for just a small second? While Monica Rossman is coming out, um, some of you may know, some of you may not know, this is going to be Monica's last Christmas pageant. For 29 years, in December, in December, she has helped bring Jesus to these children and to children throughout the history of Westminster. She has, in December, when we can barely get our children to brush their teeth, has taught them songs and taught them how to worship Jesus. So, Monica, on behalf of all of us over the years who have had children in the pageant, who have helped with the pageant, um, we thank you from the bottom of our hearts for all that you have done during this season. Thank you. Please rise. Now having heard this wonderful story of friendly beasts, of shepherds and wise men, of angels, of Mary and Joseph, and a baby born long ago, let the joy of this story fill every room in your heart. Go with the spirit of awe and the wonder of God's great love. Go and spread the joy of Jesus with us to all you meet. Go in peace. Let all God's people say, Amen. Amen.